Previously on Fire Emblem Free Houses. <gasps> You're alive! Your Highness, apologies for the late arrival. What to do? You're alive! I uh knew he wasn't dead! Holy crap! And now back to Garrett Mark Monastery. No, enough is allowed to find myself in a room like this that's just almost full. What do you have to say on this, Sophia? I'm glad you're the one giving orders on the battlefield, Professor. I don't think we should trust Dimitri with that task. Although it's thanks to his obsession that we're wasting no time taking the shortest route to defeating the Empire. I just can't see a bright future for this army, fighting as we are under the banner of a prince possessed. Even if we do succeed in defeating the Empire, I wonder what will become of Foblin. I apologize. Whenever I'm with you, I speak more openly than I should. Please keep this between us. All right, I will. Hey everybody, the Great Pikmin 6, 7, 9, here. Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Free Houses. Oh my gosh, it is alive! That's basically all I can sum up with the previous episode. I already know you as by. I already know you since I played the Black Eagles route. Thank you for bringing me here. I didn't do anything. I've been given permission to take part in this next mission too. Oh, fuck off. I'll finally be able to avenge my brother. I swear. I'll take down that monster. Are you just bringing us up for a trap? We'll surely be able to convince Count Karen. All that remains is to wait for a response from the Alliance side. For now, there are preparations to be made for the coming battle. <laughs> Your hands are facing right through the table, Gibbard. Each time we press forward, our search for Rhea broadens to a wider area. I certainly hope we will find at least some clue. But I do suspect I already know where she is. If I'm right, and she is in the Imperial Capital. And we cannot save her until we topple the Empire. I don't know. Be bold, bold to assume. Ah, meals always taste best when it is a company of three or more at the table. Do you not enjoy eating when it's just the two of us? You wound me, Flame. Ah, finally! The end of the age. Finally! Flame. Here to pester me, brother? No. I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. No, the fault is entirely mine. You were still so young. I placed far too much strain on you, and our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We... lost her because of me. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them. As an ordinary person, similar to how you and Mother coexisted with your own comrades back then. Fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father... Don't. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together, but I am no longer a child. Just as you and Mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear Father Keyhole. Huh? Thank you. Excuse me. 
Okay, now I'm just getting all sorts of confused. <laughs> this is sort of late sort of confusion. <laughs> God dang! You can't stop running. What? We got you. You're the prime minister, aren't you? Not anymore. He lost his power and his fancy title. Now he's just a man. I... Shut up! Yeah! Do you know what you've done to regular folks like us? Since you villains took over the Hrim territory, our lives have been nothing but pain and misery! Heavy taxes, forced labor, it's brutal! Now we're gonna make you pay. <laughs> hmm. Such a nice selection of tea leaves. <laughs> Talk about a mood, mood whiplash. Tea is nice and all, but it's not much good when you don't have sweets to go with it. Sweet treats are less common, yes, but perhaps that makes sense. War is not sugar-coated. If you've got time to be cheeky, you've got time to find me some sweets. But Lysithia, your smile is so sweet. Lord Ferdinand, excuse the interruption. Our scouts happened upon the information you were looking for. I thought it would be best to let you know as soon as possible. They know where my father is? Yes, sir. Tell me, now. After losing his position as Prime Minister, your father was held in Enbar for a very long time. He escaped. For a while, no one knew where he was. The other day, however, he was sighted alone in the Hrim territory. Seemed he was heading for an allied region. Hrim? Alone, you say? Was he safe? I'm afraid not. There is a major insurrection happening in the Hrim territory. It's been five years since Duke Iyer lost his control of the area. The military seems to have finally lost control, and the people's violence is unleashed. I do not understand. Wyatting. It's obvious, isn't it? Ferdinand, do you really know nothing about Hrim? Your own father was ruling it. You don't know what became of the area once he fell from power? If it was truly a House Iyer territory, I would have been trained in governing the area, but my father insisted that I have nothing to do with Rim. But now is not the time to talk about this. We have to help him before he gets caught up in the violence. Yeah. You're right. Now isn't the time for chit chat. Let's get over there quickly. Professor, will you be coming? I'll go with you. We'd better depart as soon as possible. I know a bit about the situation. I'll fill you in later. This is where my father was sighted? The citizens are rioting everywhere. Over there! Quick! We need to help them! There seem to be some people inciting the violence. If we take them out, perhaps the violence will subside. It might be best to spread out. Oh, you... The north side of the town is in chaos. I do not think we can advance. It seems better to simply hold the line against the enemies in the north and focus our efforts on saving the citizens of the east and south. I must keep going. Oh, we're making a huge mistake here. Alright, who's next? Thank you. Looks like I won't be robbed this time. All in his service! Nice! <laughs> Luck wasn't with you. Out of my way! Jeez! I disposed of doubt long ago. To beat her. Oh my gosh, you're good enough. Jeez, you have so much health. I won, didn't I? You can really do like so many attacks to me, tree. Chill. It's done. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for helping us. I don't know what would have happened if it weren't for you. I'll dirty my hands if I Dun. must. There is 
Uh, what do you mean I can barely reach it? No, you seem very weak to bows. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Do it, Bunny. Oh, Dead. <laughs> won't stop me. No time for pity. Dead. Make your Quit. Dead. On my honor as a knight. Maybe I'm not a total waste. Nice. If only... Oh, looky there. Some houses are still untouched. Let's give them a good plundering, boys. Professor, let's make haste and go help them. Their lives may be forfeit if we don't get to them quickly. I'm trying. Go on, boys. Riot to your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> One damage. This is no time to stand idle. I'm not the only bad guy here. What? We give up. Have mercy. That guy made us do it. We owe you our lives. We're saved. Saved, I say. This is me. Don't underestimate him. Damn. I get to live another day, and it's all because you came to the rescue. I think that's all of them. I'm so glad we were able to help everyone. I'll dirty my hands if I must. Let's keep our guard up. Nice. My work. Hi. They say here is something to believe in. Yep. There's no turning back now. I'm not dying here. Have luck. There's no <laughs> If we cause enough chaos, we can do whatever we want. I'll destroy you. Now when do we have something to say about it? Fulfilled. We yield! Yield! We were just following orders. It's not like we love a good riot, really! Okay. Don't get it, don't get it. You're dead! Jeez, I love this critical wing. Granted, it's only a thing I can't really do it on normal bosses, but, well, some types of bosses from this point on, but you know, whatever. Ignorance is deadly. Only thing I can do is just try at this point. I must... Well, at least Miss Sidious wasn't required. She's got enough levels as it is, I think. So many criticals. Crits everywhere, and I don't want to stop because I'm just that OP. What do you want? You better not stand in our way. I'm afraid the only thing to do is to stand in your way. Because guess what? Oh, why are you almost in Delu? I went to all the trouble of killing that noble and stealing his treasure. Father, no! So we were too late after all. <laughs> I 
gate critical hits. Interesting. Ferdinand. Hey. Yes? I... I don't know what to say. About your father, I mean. No, it is all right. Some part of me was expecting this. I do not know what happened in Hrim territory, but I am sure he got what he deserved. You knew more about it, you said? Maybe you can tell me everything later. Oh, that's just so sad. I can tell you what I know. Please, do. You know about the Hrim Rebellion, right? Of course. The rebellion started when Emperor Ionius IX tried to consolidate power. The Hrim family tried to split off from the Empire and join the Alliance. Working with House Ordelia, they raised an insurrection. The Empire suppressed it. And then a puppet leader was installed in the Hrim territory. House Iyer was tasked with handling the actual governance of the region. Seeing this, the nobles feared that the Empire would assume total control. That's when the six great noble families chose to wrest power from Ionius IX. That's right. The Insurrection of the Seven. I've always wondered why it was called Seven when there were only six noble families. It was the six great noble families, plus Hrim. How vexing. Either way, events unfolded shortly thereafter. Are you aware of how Duke Iyer was ruling the Hrim territory? He imposed harsh taxes upon the people, much harsher than on his own, making their lives very challenging. People fled their homes in droves to the neighboring Ordelia territory, but they were sent back from where they came. The Empire was occupying Ordelia territory as well, as it turned out. Issues were further complicated when Duke Iyer fell from power. Iyer was dismissed from his position, only to be replaced by Lord Arendelle. Edelgard's uncle, the regent of the Empire. Correct. And he imposed even heavier taxes on the people, squeezing them painfully dry. The people were conscripted for duty. Any who opposed were killed on the spot. Lord Arendelle did this in the name of Duke Iyer. What? Your father was by no means a great ruler, but it was Lord Arendelle who stoked the fury of the people and directed that fury at your father. Duke Iyer is not perfect, but he's not the villain in this. Lysithia, thank you for telling me all of this. I am embarrassed to say I had no idea. I see now that it was not his fault, but he did go along the wrong path and place a burden on his people. He can no longer atone for what he did, so I will have to. I need to go think about what I will do after the war, how I will make up for my father's mistakes. Nothing helps deep thought like sweets. Hmm? Sweets, they help you think. Perhaps you should find some for us. I see. If I find some, I will be sure to let you know. Oh, Lysithia. Fling! <sighs> What's wrong? Oh, hello, Professor. How nice to see you. You caught me off guard. I was actually just thinking about you. Why does I? Just a moment ago? Well, I... 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 I am afraid I just do not understand you. I don't understand you or such a reader. When we first met, I sensed something different about you. Something mysterious. And now I am convinced your existence itself is very special. Thinking on it, I know it to be true. You have a crest that should have been lost long ago. You wield the sword of the creator as if it is nothing. Because the crest stone is literally inside me. Your hair and eye color changed on that day five years ago. To the same sort of color as mine and my brother's. Except it's more lighter greener than Sophie's or yours or this. What exactly do you mean by that? I do not know. My brother refuses to speak to me of it. Since then, you have led us into battle and thus far, we have always come out victorious. Your comrades and colleagues adore you. They believe in you, in your strength. I doubt there is a single who is likened to you. Who are you, really? I don't know. I simply do not understand. Whatever the case may be, having hair like mine is proof that there is something exceptional about you. I may as well come forward with things. Please! I too 
am unlike others. How so? Surely you recall when I was targeted, specifically for my blood? I may not be special in the ways you are, but my blood is rare. It seems the two of us share a special... differentness. I also believe that we are bound together in some way. Of this I am certain. Therefore, I intend to stay by your side and watch over you. Your existence must be preserved at all cost. How do I protect you? Certainly those are the words of a hero. Let us unite our powers. Together, we are unstoppable. I just might look at this going along. Um I don't even know anymore. <laughs> hey, wait. What is it? You defended me in battle. Why? His Highness does not wish for our military strength to be depleted. The loss of your strength would be significant. You are a colossal idiot. One slip up and you would have died. You think you would have been happy about that? No, I do not. Then why protect me? I thought you were his mindless weapon, his sword and shield. I heard about your brother. He was a Dusker. He died to protect his highness. He did, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. Are you repaying some kind of debt? I hope you're not going to praise his death. I hear enough of that from my old man. I will not praise it then. Instead, I will say I would have done the same in his position. Is it really so unnatural to put one's life on the line to protect a brother in arms? To hear a rabid dog call me a brother in arms. Your insults are merely an attempt to avoid addressing me as what I am. I am a man of Dusker, yet you were concerned for my life. Concerned is a strong word. Your death would have been unpleasant, that's all. Coming from you, that is enough. What's that supposed to mean? I just meant... <sighs> never mind. Okay, go ahead, protect me. But if you act like a fool and get yourself killed, I'll kill you. <laughs> Double kill? How can you kill me? If I am already dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you, you know what I meant. <laughs> I will kill. I will go into the afterlife and kill you again. <laughs> I don't know. So the campaign continues, does it? Well, allow me, as a professional recluse with ten years of experience, to volunteer for, um, staying behind. Oh, who am I kidding? The fighting won't stop until we've defeated Edelgard, will it? Or until we lose, I guess. But there's not much use in thinking about that. No, he's ending up in 69 numbers somehow. Whether I do it intentionally or not. Okay, nothing decisive yet, so... fog settling in. We won't be able to advance our troops very far in this. We won't be able to move at all until the fog lifts. No matter which path we take, we'll have to be patient and wait it out. Gilbert? No? Gustav. I would like to take this opportunity to speak with you about something. It's about the tragedy of Dusker. There's something about it I just can't wrap my head around. I'm listening. I lost a son in Dusker that day. I exhausted every last resource I had to investigate what took place there. I was startled to find that there wasn't a single shred of evidence to suggest that Lady Patricia's carriage had been attacked. Go on. Apart from His Highness, whose injuries left him on the verge of death, everyone else present at the time was slaughtered. Of all the victims, only the corpse of Lady Patricia, His Majesty's second wife, was never found. Isn't that right? Hmm. Surely that means she was abducted. There was no evidence of an attack, suggesting they threatened her, but did not kill her. But what reason would they have to take her? Would it not have been better to kill her? Perhaps she had some value as a diplomatic pawn. Nonsense. In the many years since that day, has Lady Patricia ever been used thus? No, not as far as I know. Then perhaps she was used for some political gain within the Empire. Now that her daughter is the Emperor, what reason would she have to keep hiding her existence? It is possible she passed away after returning to the Empire. Gustav, I know this is hard for you to hear, 
But just consider what it would mean if Lady Patricia was involved with that incident. Silence, Rodrigue. I will not allow you to tarnish her memory like that. I do not mean to imply that she arranged His Majesty's murder or anything of the like. But Gustav, I cannot shake the feeling that the tragedy was part of a much larger conspiracy. I see. There is more to it than we know. That much is certain. Rodrigue! Gilbert! Please hurry! To kill like this is inhuman. This is one of the knights we dispatched to the leader of the Alliance. Tell me everything you know. Sir, a soldier on patrol came across this knight a short while ago, in a rocky area not far from here. Someone from the Alliance must have disposed of the body there. Is this how the Alliance chose to inform us that they have no intention of joining our cause? Maybe it was the Empire. Yes. I would not hesitate to believe them capable of this. Whatever the truth is, the other knights we dispatched are in serious danger. It's best to assume that joining with the Alliance is out of the question now. Even with Count Karen's support, this makes our situation grim. I never expected the Alliance to help us. Anyone who stands in my way will be crushed beneath my feet. It is time, dear brother. That makes perfect sense before I go any further. And don't forget. The Kingdom Army departs from the Great Bridge of Murden and marches south toward Enbar, the Imperial capital. Meanwhile, the Alliance Army follows from behind to invade Imperial territory, and the Empire has dispatched forces from Fort Mercius to intercept them. Oh. The curtain is rising on a conflict between the three armies, which will come to be known as the Battle at Grondor, held on the same plains that witnessed the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh my god, this is gonna tear my heart into pieces! Hey look, even the persistents are still the same! Oh no, there's the morning beasts! Oh no! Oh no! Oh very no! Oh no! Oh heck no! <laughs> oh no! Know that I will tear your heads from your shoulders. The dead must have their tribute. Dimitri? As big class reunions go, this one's got to be the worst in history. Claude? Years ago, we fought here as classmates. Ow. But not today. Kill every last one of them! Dimitri! And so we fight on. You have finally appeared, Edelgard. Now. You are mine! The Kingdom Army doesn't look too interested in joining forces with us. Let's take a moment to see how this all unfolds. It would not be advantageous to take on both at once. We must stop the Kingdom and the Alliance from joining forces. I will create such chaotic warfare that they won't be able to tell who is friend and who is foe. What's my strategy? Hey, here's the thing. I have magic. But you. This could turn the tides. Let's make this quick. 
Oh, and this music is just remixed. Oh no, <laughs> it feels even worse hearing it now like this. I mean, it's just an additional course, but still. The end of dawn. They even have that leave motif struck in too. Cause why not, right? Ready for anything. My orders. I am prepared. I'll comply. Gee, the lag. I'll do my best. I do this for all of us. My turn. At your service. Mounted units, advance! Hi, victory. you're dead. Hi. You're an idiot. It won't be in vain. You're dead. This could turn the tides. Had to be done. Uh, <laughs> there are enemies in the central area. We need to head there immediately to protect it. T too late, I'm already in the middle. Suckle. <laughs> the Empire and Kingdom are mixed up in this battle. It's a struggle to target the right one. Such are the rules of melee. We'll just have to crush anyone who isn't an ally. Hi, where'd you come from? Oh, my lord, you ended that, Dimitri. Eventually, I too will fall. Another victory. I'm strong. Still. I'm not afraid. Come at me. Atone for your sins. My. You're actually alive, Teach. It's a shame you aren't on our side. Anyway, isn't the Empire your enemy? Us fighting seems like a waste. I don't know why you're talking to me, then. Ah. Ow. Forgive me. Mm, okay, wow, okay. So let's stick with the actual plan. And uh not mess up. What's my strategy? This Dead. Let me no alternative. Oh, can I get Bernie dead quickly, please? That's a lot of people heading our way though. All talk and no action. With each kill, more monstrous. Oh, Dimitri. Those fools who went up the hill will pay with their lives in the crimson flames. Oh no. Ah jeez. Um this thing's bad. Okay, um stay away from that. What's my strategy? Don't be noted. Okay, yeah, whatever. Just hit me for 30 damage. Or you can miss. Whatever works. Sorry to do this to you, man. Maybe in the third route. Chance, but there was no way to predict the movements of the Kingdom Army. I've also not stayed out of this uniform one bit. I can't afford to die here. I have to retreat. 
Doing heavy damage. I'll do my hands if I must. There we go. I could go. I don't like how everybody's targeting me. This is a bit ridiculous. Oh, are you kidding me? Alright, fine, though. If you want to play that game, be that, uh, be that way. The central hill is up in smoke. Suppose I'll have to quench the flames with the enemy's blood. Hubert's approaching. Hubert's approaching. A lot of things are approaching. I'm leveling up once again. Being the most OP professor ever around. Next step, I'm dead. Let's do it at full health. Because I'm sure it's like that'll be helpful. I might as well be some tense enough to fire this attack neck <laughs> coming at me. Because, <laughs> good lord. Really underestimate that was just pain. Oh look, I'm almost dead. But at least those enemies have acting turns. It's the thing, I have a sword. Now I lost the sword. Because it broke. Get the heck out of dodge, Dimitri. You're interfering with the plan. Looks like I'll just have to get rid of you. Predictable. Miss. Here's a level sword. Preferably to your death. Watch and learn. Ha! <laughs> Fighting on will endanger my life. Your Majesty, I must withdraw. No need to worry. We still have some troops left. So long as I stand, we won't give up. I'm with you. Damn it, boost! Honor as a Level up. Indeed. Sorry to do it, Dizel. I knew when next we met, one of our paths would have to come to an end. Your journey ends here, Professor. Forever. Sorry. It's a crit. I lost. Just as expected, you aren't making my path an easy one. I must retreat for now. We'll meet again on the battlefield. Because of course you do retreat. Because this wasn't to find a battle. Because of course not. Why would it be? So, you think you can escape, Edelgard? Your Highness, you're alive. We have to retreat to the Great Bridge of Murden. That woman. We failed to capture her. I will keep pursuing. The Dimitri. Rest of you Keep fighting! I'm so sorry, but we can't do that. I understand how you feel, but the Imperial Army is closing in. I'll kill all of them. No matter how many hundreds or thousands of them there are! <sighs> you! What are you doing here? It's too dangerous. Fall back! Now! <laughs> You are. I mean, I freaking knew it. I freaking knew it was a trap all along. <laughs> oh, have I caught you off guard, Your Highness? Aww, does it hurt? I bet it hurts real bad, doesn't it? But it's nothing compared to what my brother felt. You will never be forgiven, you know. I will never forgive you. <laughs> You... you must be... You filthy monster! It's time to die! Dimitri! <gasps> ah, huh. Professor! Do it now! <clears throat> Brother... help... me... Rodrigue! <sighs> Your Highness... Are you safe? Please tell me it wasn't in vain. This punishment, it was mine to bear. Dimitri. There are no sins or punishments on the battlefield. No, don't die. Please don't die. Father, stepmother, Glenn, they all died and left me behind. Roderick, 
Are you to join the ghosts who shadow my every move? This is my fault. I... I'm the one who killed you. As surely as though I had wielded the blade. <laughs> Your Highness, you have one thing terribly wrong. None of them, none of us, died for you. I'm dying for what I believe in, just as they did. Your life is your own. It belongs to no other, living or dead. Live for what you believe in. Rig. Dimitri, my boy. You really do look just like His Majesty. <sighs> what are you saying, Lambert? I am heading to Dusker. And before you start, nothing you could say would change my mind. You worry too much, my friend. So far, relations with Dusker have been going smoothly, wouldn't you say? You, of all people, should appreciate how critical these negotiations are. Of course I do, but for the king himself to make the journey, you must admit that it's dangerous, and his highness is still so young. If the worst should happen... Even if the worst should happen, he would be okay. He's a smart boy, Rodrigue. Even if he should lose his father, I have no doubt that he will grow to be a good and respectable man. Lambert. However, if he ever starts down the wrong path, and I am not here to set him straight, I am trusting you to do so in my stead, old friend. Promise me. Lambert. My promise. I... <laughs> this is worse. This is so much worse. What do you want? Where are you going? It doesn't concern you. It does. Get out of my way. No. You're going to end ball, aren't you? Do you really think that will appease the dead? Silence! You have no idea what you're talking about. Death is the end. No matter how much lingering regret a person has, after death, they are powerless. They cannot even wish for revenge, much less seek it out. Hatred, regret... Those burdens fall on the shoulders of those who are left behind. And so I must continue down this path. I already told you as much. It is far too late to stop. There must be another way. Do not waste your breath with some nonsense about how I should move on with my life for their sake. That is merely the logic of the living. It's meaningless. Those who died with lingering regret, they will not loose their hold on me so easily. But you seem to have all the answers. So tell me, Professor. Please, tell me. How do I silence their desperate pleas? How do I... How do I save them? Ever since that day nine years ago, I have lived only to avenge the fallen. Even my time at the Officer's Academy was all so that I could secure my revenge and clear away the regret of the dead. It was the only thing that kept me alive. My only reason to keep moving forward. You must forgive yourself. <laughs> but then who or what should I live for? Live for what you believe in. What I believe in? <laughs> Rodrigue said the same thing. But is it possible? I am a murderous monster. My hands are stained red. Could one such as I truly hope for such a life? As the sole survivor of that day, do I... Do I have the right to live for myself? Dimitri... Your hands are so warm. Have they always been?
Part 2. Azure Moon. Harpstring Moon. The King's Triumphant Return. Following the death of Rodri, Dimitri begins to question his desire for revenge. His troubled mind turns to the kingdom capital and how he might end the chaos plaguing Fargus once and for all. Our victory at Drondor was certainly a turning point for us. However, Rodrigue's death has been difficult to bear. We've lost considerable military strength and resources. Is there no way to secure more soldiers? If we split up the soldiers currently defending the monastery, we should have sufficient numbers to invade the Empire. But even then... Your Highness, you should think. Your wounds are still healing. I am well, I assure you. More importantly, may I have a moment of your time? Huh? Sure. Thank you. I wish to apologize to all of you. I have led you down this dark path with me and have caused so much suffering along the way. I cannot tell you how sorry I am for my behavior. There is no apology I could offer that would be sufficient. <laughs> And how do you intend to make up for my father's death? Felix, I realize words alone are not enough to repent, but I fear they are all I have. I'm not after more empty words. I want you to speak through your actions. I know that no amount of regret can ever bring back the lives we have lost. I... I know that well. It is like patching up a tear with a different material. Things can never be as they were. The best I can hope for is to make things whole again. I wish to do the right thing from now on. That is why I have made a decision. I intend to take back the Kingdom Capital. I wish to save our people. Those who I turned my back on for far too long. To follow my heart and do the right thing. That is the only way I can atone for my sins. Dimitri. Your Highness. <clears throat> if we can win back Ferdiad, it will give us the advantage in our war against the Empire. As one who has served the royal family for ages, know that your words bring me great joy and pride. That said, I must point out that if we make for Ferdiad, the Emperor's head will slip further out of reach. Can you live with that? I still hold hatred in my heart for her, and for the ones responsible for the tragedy. That I will carry with me until death. But my life is my own. It belongs to no one else, and it is high time that I started living for what I believe in. I will no longer allow the voices of the dead to bind me. This is something that I must do. No. Something that I am choosing to do. I will accomplish my aim, even if it means risking my life to do so. Understood, Your Highness. So, any objections? Count me in. You are correct. We cannot afford to die in vain by recklessly challenging the Empire. I'm worried about Lady Rhea. But if this is the choice you've made, I support it. I am at your command, Your Highness. I will follow you anywhere. My sword is at your service, Your Highness. I'll help too. The people in Ferdiad need us. Fine. I'll help you, in my father's stead. But in return, you must win. You know that, don't you, Dimitri? I do. And I swear on my father's lance that we will prevail. Then it is decided. It seems this war council has much to discuss. Our next stop is Ferdiad, the kingdom capital. For the future of Fargus. Hey. Finally talk to you. It's been so long. Your Highness, you still have scars on your back. It does you no good to languish in pain. I will procure some medicine. No, it is fine. Well, they are still deep. These are from nine years ago. They do not hurt any longer. And besides, it would be a shame if the scars I got from protecting you were to fade. I bear these scars proudly. It makes me think that it was worthwhile that someone like me survived. To hear you say such things. To do, you say that I saved you. 
But do you know that you also saved me that day? If I had been unable to save anyone, I would have been the sole survivor. I would have had no reason to keep living, but I saved someone. Saved you. That and that alone has always been my crutch. When I stood before those soldiers and their swords that day, I was prepared to die. But then, you suddenly appeared, and you shielded me. I knew then that a savior's hand could reach into even the deepest darkness. I still have not been able to repay that debt. Have you not heard a word I've said? You have saved me in countless ways. Five years ago, I did nothing but await my execution within my jail cell. Was it not you that saved me? That was nothing more than my duty as your vassal. Listen, to do. Perhaps you consider me to be someone special, but I think the same of you. You are irreplaceable, cherished. So stop saying that we cannot be friends. Stop saying such awful things. Please, do not look at me that way. You promised me you would build a kingdom that is proud to boast of Dusker blood. In this kingdom, where there is no distinction between the people of Dusker and the people of Fodlin, will I finally, without reservation, be able to call you my friend? Will I, Dimitri? To do. Yes, you will call me your friend again and again, no matter how many hardships I must endure. I will do all I can to bring about that world as well. To be your friend is what I have always wanted. Is that so? I... I am glad to hear it. But until that time, we must allow no harm to befall you. So please call upon me when you walk alone at night. And even when you go out in the day, please tell me where you are going and whom you are meeting. In the end, I suppose there is no fixing your overprotectiveness, is there? <laughs> I suppose I can live with that. <laughs> That's nice. Hi. Still training? Indeed, but I was thinking about ending it here. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. What wounds? The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Gronder. Her eyes were filled with revenge, just as mine once were. <laughs> I wouldn't know who he is. I don't know, but I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. What are you talking about? I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. What? Why did they do it? It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. I have taken so many lives, and with each one I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast. And that young girl's brother, at some point I must have... That is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated. Because I stole and... Because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions. Only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. I feel the same way, Dimitri. Yes. As one who chose to fight, it is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war until the day my life comes to an end. We can confront it together. Thank you. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Well, at least I'm glad you know that now. Welcome back. I mean, you were with us, but you weren't able to do much, so welcome back. Welcome back, man. Hey. I really caused trouble for you, didn't I? I am so sorry, truly. It's fine, Dimitri. I am also eternally grateful to you. Now, it's time to go to the Kingdom Capital. 
I hope that you will lend me your strength once again. Everyone is saying His Highness is back to his old self, but I do not think that is accurate. What he was until recently is what he had been for as long as I've known him. So tortured by his compassion for the fallen that it had driven him mad. He has always been too kind to be king. He has always felt too much for the weak and the dead. That is exactly why I look up to him. Interesting way to put it. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out, please! Maybe. Please, thank you. Ingrid? I've been doing some thinking, and it occurs to me that I owe you an apology. What? Why do you seem so serious? In a just world, you would be happily married to Glenn. He... He truly loved you. And it's clear that you care deeply for him as well. But on that awful night, he died right before my eyes. I could do nothing to prevent it. In a way, I'm responsible for you losing the joyous future that should have been yours. I know my words can change nothing, but... I'm so sorry, Ingrid. No, Your Highness. There's... There's no need to apologize. Glenn's death... It still doesn't feel real. I always looked up to Glenn. He was the very picture of a perfect knight. Noble and virtuous. Maybe it isn't some of us are good enough for the battle and... Well, I'm fine. I have separate things for a reason. And as long as I just make sure not to overwrite the very first file at the very least, I should be fine. Those were from Northern Fog, so I used to fit to the fifth court. Although Gary Mark is looking at the top of the mountain, someone he could be friend built of sorts for the knocks. What can I do to boost the morale? Is that so? Despite their victory at the Battle of Grander, the Kingdom Army turns around and marches for Ferdiad instead of heading south. To hail the arrival of the Kingdom Army, the people of Ferdiad begin to rebel. No move is made to suppress them. Instead, Cornelia directs her borrowed Imperial troops to prevent Dimitri from reaching the Kingdom capital. Ferdiad. It has been a lifetime since I was here last. Five years ago, in fact. On the day before my execution, when Dadu helped me escape from prison, I killed soldiers from my homeland, stole weapons from their corpses, and made my escape soaked in their blood. To think this is how I would return to the city of my birth after all that has happened. Now what week to think? Yes. Rodrigue gave his life to show me the way back to this path. You have risked much as well. I am glad to have you at my side. From the bottom of my heart, I am forever grateful. You're welcome. I just wish I could give you a hug right now! Let's win this, Professor. Let's all make it out alive and celebrate our victory. Right. Your Highness, the path to the castle has been cleared. We are making preparations to advance. Say the word... And we march. Give the order. Yes. Let us begin. Everyone, listen well. This battle is for all that the Empire stole from us. It is a fight to reclaim the days of peace we once enjoyed. I give you but two commands. Stay alive and follow your heart. That is all I ask. The gates to the Kingdom Capital are open. Join me! It is time to take back our home! I thought I would see you again, little princeling. Huh, so stubborn. It must run in your family. Cornelia, the city is overrun with insurrection. It seems to be in response to our enemy's arrival. If we do nothing, our army may suffer damages. We should suppress the citizens immediately. The people are rebelling? <laughs> Let them do as they please. Or are you saying you have enough soldiers to divide our forces? Quite bold of you, with our enemy's most elite soldiers at our doorstep. But... what are you suggesting? The city is going to be a battlefield anyway. Kill all who oppose us. Go on now. You are needed out there. As you wish. May we find fortune in the battle to come. 
What an inconvenience the little princeling has turned out to be. And bringing that troublesome person along with him. It would have been much better if he and his sweet little stepsister had been good little children and just killed each other. I hate you. <laughs> That's why I never liked you and never got to know you because you're a giant brick. I hate this place. I think. It was different. It is an entirely different area. Not the place I thought it was. Oops. We're first going for the sides, we're going for here. We're going for the middle. I didn't dare, I don't care. <laughs> the preparations are all in place. Time to meet my old master. Ready the Titanists in the streets. Let's give them a welcome to remember. Advance! Smash that traitor Cornelia and reclaim the capital! I will not lose. I swear it by the blood in my veins. What's my strategy? Let's make this quick. Leave it to me. Onward. Yeah, I'm still not going this way. My orders? My orders? Ready for anything. I'll do my best. At your service. I am prepared. Come on, guys. Not going this way. <laughs> Come on now. My turn. I do this for all of us. I must lead them well. Magic in use, we should find the source and eliminate it. Exploit their weak spots. Up. 
feel Weren't the tightness enough for you? Well then, we had better activate the Visco. Maybe we shouldn't load those things. Up. The better to down my guard.
level up. Not to me. On to the next battle. At your service. You me. I will not let down my guard. My orders. My turn. Oh my, what a charming guest. Let me take care of you. No. I do this for all of us. Long time, hasn't it, Your Highness? You've grown awfully strong. Oh, shameless. I bet it was you who killed my uncle and set me up. Am I right? <laughs> Too true. I'd already forgotten about all that loveliness. I'll kill you, you monster. You will pay for all that you have done. I'm sorry. Uh my strategy. Excuse me, pardon me, gonna hear them. <laughs> oh, you suck. Leave it to me. Okay, can you not? Thank you. Die. So this is as far as I could get. It was the least. <laughs> well, so be it. Still, I'll give you a little gift. It's over, Cornelia. If you have any last words. Now is the time. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> Very well. I have an old tale that I would like you to hear, if I may. About something that happened ten years ago. Something Patricia said about how she wished to see her real daughter again, no matter who or what she had to sacrifice to do so. And about how I made her wish come true, <laughs> at the cost of the king's head. The king's head? You mean Dusker? You monster! You mean to say that my father, everyone, was killed by my stepmother? <laughs> That's right. Her family meant everything to her. You certainly know that feeling, do you not? <laughs> oh, poor little prince. Unloved by the only mother he ever knew. <laughs> How pitiful. Fuck you. How dare you! 
There's nothing left for you now. Nothing but despair. Okay, more motivation max. Okay, good, great, wonderful, outstanding, amazing. All we did was just press a button. Try as that woman might to spout nonsense to her very last, nothing could change the fact that she was an enemy of the kingdom. She sold out Fargus to the Empire, forcing our people to suffer their tyranny. But all that ends today. No more blood will be needlessly spilled. Now that Cornelia has fallen, we will exert pressure on the nobles who were aligned with her. Perhaps we may yet find a connection to the tragic incident in Dusker. Once we do that, we will finally be able to prove the innocence of its people. Your Highness, I am certain that would make those of Dusker who lost their lives that day very happy. I am grateful, and I am proud to serve a man such as you. Come, Your Highness. You still have some responsibilities that must be carried out. Your people have been patiently awaiting your return. Do you mean... no. I can't bear to face them after all that I... You must face them. Professor, right you are, as ever. I am their king, after all. What... what is this? As you can see, the people are rejoicing at the return of their king. Even though I turned my back on them and fled the kingdom in disgrace. Even so, the spectacle before you does not lie. We are a kingdom in need of a king, a hero to save the people from their long oppression. Your Highness, it is truly a blessing that you have returned. Do I really have the right to stand here? Will they accept me as their king? Bloodstained as I am, am I fit to be king? Fiotono will be forgiven. Yes, you are right again, my friend. I am finally home again. Fargus, how I missed you. It may be spring, but the nights are quite chilly here in Ferdiad. Mm. Still, our celebratory feast shows no sign of stopping. Have you grown weary of the festivities? I was going to ask you the same. It's not that I have grown weary. More that I find it difficult to be around everyone at the moment. I see. I have just returned from visiting the graves of my loved ones. It had been a long while since I left Flowers. I was always terribly afraid of going near there, but I could not stay away forever. You have taught me something important, Professor. <laughs> Swordsman tip. Business? <laughs> that too, of course. But what I'm referring to is far more valuable. How should I put this? Perhaps it is most accurate to say that you taught me how to live. If you and I had not reunited on that fateful day, I am certain I would have died a fruitless death on the battlefield. I would have foolishly challenged a horde of foes. And in doing so, needlessly sacrificed the lives of my friends and myself. But now, I have returned to my rightful place. I struggle with what to say when I know well that words are not enough to express my gratitude. You saved me from the darkness, and guided me back to the light. Ah. Thank you, Professor. With all that I am, I thank you. Do you still wish for revenge? Revenge was never something I wished for. It was an obligation I felt I had inherited from those who died. I believed my life belonged to those who lost their own in Dusker. But what I now seek is something else entirely. I can say that with confidence. But I digress. For tonight, our only focus should be to bask in our victory. After that, we must prepare for our battle with the Empire. To start, we must absorb the Kingdom Knights taken by the Dukedom into our own forces and reshuffle our troops. The Lords will need to help purge our territory of Imperial forces, and I will use my authority as King to gather forces from various regions. And we'll have to ask the merchants to lend us the funds we require. Oh, and we must request delivery of supplies at once. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Just thinking about it all makes my head spin. 
There is much to do, but it is all critical work if we hope to stand a chance against the Empire. Yeah. But is there no way to coexist with the Empire? Knowing Edelgard, I doubt there is a path that leads to our coexistence. I believe we have spoken of this before. Everyone has something they simply cannot accept. As for Edelgard, I am certain she will never be able to accept the Church of Seros. I believe that is why she seeks to destroy it. She is looking to revolutionize the world, in her mind, for the better. But even if she manages to birth a new world, it would be at the cost of... I wish to end this war through acceptance, not annihilation. Just as my people accepted me, I wish dearly to accept her. But I fear... Your Highness, I finally found you. Ah, I'm sorry for slipping away. Has something happened? An express messenger just arrived from the leader of the Alliance. <sighs> Please, return to the castle at once. An express messenger? What in the world could Claude be after? I am on my way. Professor, please join me. Right. Part 2. Azure Moon. Garland Moon. The Golden Deer's Plea. The Kingdom Army has reclaimed the Kingdom Capital and plans to immediately begin restoring the country and its forces. But an unexpected request arrives from Claude, leader of the Leicester Alliance. Dimitri promptly responds to the request for aid, and he rushes to prepare the Kingdom's forces. We have received a request for aid from the Alliance. They are being invaded by the Empire. We have only just taken back Ferdiad, and yet I am already asking all of you to move out once more. Please accept my apologies for that. That's no problem at all. More importantly, how is the Alliance faring? House Regan has rallied the Alliance Lords. They are facing the enemy with all the strength they can muster. But we do not know how far that will get them. It seems the enemy's relentless attacks have forced them into a tough situation. Their defeat at Grandeur severely weakened the Alliance. I imagine the Empire now intends to destroy them before they can recover. To think they'd watch us chase their soldiers out of the Kingdom capital, then immediately go invade the Alliance. Their general is Lord Volkard von Arendel. He serves as regent to the Emperor. He has presumably taken command after the Emperor was wounded in Grandeur. He is known for his shrewdness and excels not only in domestic affairs, but tactics as well. He is not an opponent we should take lightly. Lord Arendel. Are you concerned? I always suspected that Lord Arendel was behind the tragedy nine years ago. The timing of his departure from the kingdom, the fact that he abruptly stopped making donations. Too many factors made him suspect. If Lord Arendel conspired with Cornelia, then what Kronja and the others said five years ago. Mm. Well, never mind that for now. The Alliance needs our help. What are your thoughts? If we turn our back on the Alliance and then dare to rule falls, it will undoubtedly make our situation difficult further down the road. We would have enemies in two directions, in the Alliance to the northeast and in the Empire to the south. That is true. In that scenario, we would not be able to safely march our soldiers to Enbar. I am terribly worried about Lady Rhea, but I believe we must save the Alliance first. Oh, maybe if we do this, the Alliance will help us out in return. We could ask them to help us attack the Empire. You know, a sneak attack or something. Annie! When did you become so devious? What do you think, Professor? Let's watch for Daydream. Yes, I agree. I will admit that there is something to be gained for us as well, for when we eventually march south. But far more importantly, they need us. We cannot turn our backs on them. Right. We will arrange to head out at once. Prepare yourselves, everyone. Uh, the Silver Maiden, okay. Alright, well, at this point, I'm, I'm just gonna stop showing the support, because. Really, all I care about is the story at this point. It'll just make it a lot more easier for me to edit these videos far more into the future. Hello. And I'm already sure that there are a ton of videos showing each and every one of the supports. I don't intend to turn all of them because good lord it's forever. 
It'll just take forever. Let's see. It was over 20 years ago. There was an illness raging across Ferdiad. Our people were dying left and right. It was Cornelia who saved the kingdom from that dreadful illness. No, I hear she was originally an Imperial scholar. She was in the kingdom by my father's invitation. People praised Cornelia as a saint for ending the epidemic. But there came a day when she completely changed. Her behavior, mannerisms, likes, dislikes, everything. Despite all that, father still appointed her to a high post. After all, she had saved the kingdom from ruin by that disease. But above all, my stepmother trusted her. That's why what that woman said is... <sighs> Never mind. If you say so. Lord Rodrigue Fraldarius has passed on. Margrave Gautier has assumed his position and is now gathering the lords of the Eastern Territories. House Gautier is equal in prestige to House Fraldarius. Sylvain is a Gautier. These lords are reorganizing the Fargus army and eradicating any remaining factions that claim allegiance to the Empire. Of course, His Highness is being kept apprised with regular reports, but it falls to me to monitor him and ensure he does not try to take on too much. I would ask you to do the same. If you take your eyes off that man, even for a moment, he is liable to do something rash. I see. Well, but anyways, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do some training for everybody else, because... Right. I feel our battles ahead will only be a lot worse if I just stuck with the team that I have. With the exception of the Silver Maiden, because, you know... I've yet to do that. So, next time let's play Fire Emblem Three Houses. One paralogue later, and we're going to help Claude stop the Empire. And I'll see you guys then.